Hey guys, Sean here. Today I don't want to take a look at Astralis versus Fnatic. This is their first gun round on T side, Astralis. Um, and I'm not really going to break down a strat per se, but I'm going to show you guys how everyone on Astralis understands rotations and you know how to move through the map and trade kills really well. And this is something I preach all the time on my stream and it's it's kind of hard to show people what I mean, but I think this is an excellent round to showcase you know, just how fundamentally solid a team like Astralis is. So without further ado, let's take a look. So they do a lot of things in this round that like I've preached to my teams for years now. Um, and you can tell like all their players are super aware. So we're gonna start with a, a two connector or blue default, two people going towards um, playground. And we have Zipix, you know, making a small presence by B, mauling sandbag and stuff like that. So these guys go into connector and they're about to get this kill. Dupree gets this kill on JW, okay? So what does this mean in like the grand picture thing? So this is something like I've told my teams a lot in the past and I'm sure Astralis might think similar things, I'm not 100%, but when you find a person inside blue, they're typically paired with people that push short B because the two work really well together, right? They're all, you also have a high likelihood of maybe having people support him on sands or you know short A, whatever you'd like to call this area, but you're not likely to find people in long A because they don't pair well together. And if you were to play say connector and long A together, they would both be taking you know one VX duels, which isn't favorable at, at the top level, right? So immediately what you're gonna see is the vice is going to now prod towards long A, right? So. He's gonna head towards long A, he's taking his time, clearing out all these angles one by one, but he's taking engagements all by himself. Engagements that he probably wouldn't take if it were a 5v5 with no info, right? So you see the connector people actually fall back. Uh, one of them does actually, Zipix comes back from B and together they're clearing short, okay? So these three are now clearing short A together. Their spacing is very, very strong. So this is a, a smoke that crims through down. Again, this is a light buy. Third round of the half, they lost pistol. So keeping everything in perspective, this is their utility right now. Not much, right? Um, Magis is working up connector, and he's in a scenario where if he were to encounter people in connector, Dupree would be able to swing down and trade that kill. Glaive would be right there with him. Um, they would all be ready to, you know, trade that kill in connector. What they're realizing right now is they have no B presence, and it's very, very likely at this point in the round, you know, there is a guy in short B and they're probably playing heavier towards the A site, right? So what you're gonna see Astralis do at this point in the round is actually really smart. They're gonna fake the A bomb site um, as Crimson Smoke fades, and Device is gonna make a presence and get spotted long A. And I'm gonna show you guys what that does to the rotations. Okay, so we have Device working towards long A, and he spots the jump spot right there. So now he's immediately gonna smoke back wall site. So he's smoking back wall site, these guys also just kind of made some noise at short. And you see, you know, there's actually a nade that blew up to his right, right there, uh, Dupree's right. So it's gonna cause a shift in the Fnatic players. You can see Flush has already left short B. Lecro's already like, look, looks like he's, you know, heading back towards the A site. And almost immediately you're gonna see the Ashalas players say, okay, now's the time that B is weak. Let's head back to B. We pulled the rotation from B. And you can see they're pulling Flusha away from B. And it's actually Lecro who's ended up staying. Just because I think he's more of an anchor player than Flusha. You can see Flusha rotating around a lot more on Fnatic. Um, Device doesn't overstay as welcome. He doesn't blow this five on four. Like I see this even a lot at the top level where you know, this person long feels like they need to commit. They don't need to commit. They, they just need to make that presence and you know pull the rotation. Make sure there's two, at least two people in the A site because you have no idea what's going on at this point in the round, right? But by doing what he did and what the short A people did, they forced two people into the site and potentially a third, right? Which is what they do. Then the next thing I wanna show you is how they exit the connector door. Now, this is something you know that also is way overlooked in lower leagues, but you can watch how Magix is about to jump out this door. It's not to get a kill. He's gonna jump out to make the first guy miss and it's the guy behind him's responsibility to trade that kill, right? Oftentimes you'll see like lower tier teams, they'll open the door and they'll, they'll hesitate. They'll stagnate around the door and the first guy dies. And by the time you ever get that trade, you know, like two people are moving towards B site, 
this guy has then like pushed up short a like he's in an advantageous scenario and you've lost any advantage you had about you know pushing and pulling the rotations towards the a site i'm assuming that there's a guy here by the way um so let's take a look at how he exits this so he jumps you can see he like literally doesn't stop running and he goes left he doesn't hook right that's very important to note um the next thing is you see dupree is the last one out of the bunch he is going to actually stay in here and flash these guys to go monster now why are they going out monster well you go out monster in these late round scenarios with low nades because i mean imagine running through sandbag you have to look you know you have to look towards graffiti you have to look towards this pit area you have to look towards or i'm sorry the ramp area you have to look towards pit you have to worry about the pillar right here you have to worry about barrels you have to also look right so you don't want to entry out of the sandbag position so Astralis knows this and they send the bulk of their team out monster and Dupree as the last guy is going to flash them out so on the way towards monster I think it's Glaive he might smoke heaven which is the only thing you need to really smoke coming out monster in a late round scenario like this because it allows you to take engagements on the right side of the pillar right imagine taking the B site without a heaven smoke you're not very comfortable about peeking the right side of the pillar because a guy heaven could fight you as you're fighting you know someone from here or pit and you end up in like a triple crossfire kind of scenario without even realizing it so smoking heaven is the only important piece of utility right here and they all know that like this isn't some kind of pre-arranged strat this round and that, that's what i'm trying to make the point of saying here so you can see let's actually watch this from Dupree's perspective because you can tell how important he knows his role is in getting this flash off right here so he's getting ready to line it up his teammates are running towards monster and he gets peaked by Lecro, right now most people in the scenario would be like okay fuck the flash right <laughs> fuck the flash but he still manages to get this flash off device is right behind him he's coming from long a and together they're going to come out monster right so their swing pillar you can see first guy swings his left next to you swing right and they aggressively take the site and they smoke off rotations now it, this round definitely isn't super complex when you look at it. You know, it's not a pretty um, like execute or anything like that. Charles does have gorgeous executes, but this just goes to show you know their fundamental knowledge about moving around the map, how to trade kills properly. Their spacing is so on point here. They understand rotations and where people should and shouldn't be in tier one Counter Strike, and they abuse it. They abuse it really, really well. Um, and people would probably be like, "Well, what if you played long and what if you played connector?" Well, it's not a recipe for success for the long term because, because I mean, like you, you couldn't lose those engagements. What if Ashalas were to go straight into a B shot? So you're, like, you're like, well, what if we played long? What if we played short and played connector? What if Ashalas went straight into a B shot? You'd lose that round, right? So um, Ashalas knows how to play every situation to their advantage on a map like Overpass. And I think I actually pointed out this round and, and discussed it briefly on stream at uh, Marseille. Uh, but I thought it'd be important to make a video of it just to show you guys, you know, how meticulous this team is. And even a round that looks like a total shit show, they're very, very organized uh, throughout the entire round. So anyway, I hope you guys like this kind of video. I'm going to really be releasing a lot more content now. Um, I'm kind of done with launcher content that I, I was helping people create. So yeah, back to creating more content. Thanks, guys. Peace.